Assalamu alaikum everyone and a very good evening. Uh, Arsi, please confirm me if I'm audible and I'll be able to see you. I can I could check your mic as well. Uh, yes, you are audible. Can you hear me properly? Okay. Yes, I can. Uh, since we are the same people, we won't. Uh, really need introductions again. Me and Ika will be the host for today, along with Arshi. And um, I hope you participated in the poll in the start, and uh, it was okay. So first of all, uh, we would like to talk uh, to you about the topic today. The topic today. is the photography and uh, word view of their smile the selection of the most suitable equipment for extra oral and intra oral photography requires knowledge of digital photography and can be confusing for dental practitioners so understanding the basics of dental photography including equipment and technique and properly applying these fundamentals will help dental teams document consistent and clinically useful dental photographic records so uh, to fulfill that and to learn something about that uh, we have with us um, uh, again uh, uh, dr abbas nakvi and uh, we are going to have that session today and we really hope that these uh, different aspects are covered and you learn something about it because of the importance that this topic holds uh, over to you arsil so before moving on to the topic uh this quiz uh the link has forwarded to you in the email it will start accepting responses on time we will tell you uh now sir over to you all right good uh, morning as far as i'm concerned and uh, good evening as far as you are concerned uh, assalamu alaikum everyone great to see you uh, back uh about 135 participants today just just a heads up just a heads up i have a hard stop at 11:30 so i this might be a little bit of a breeze okay so please listen carefully be very attentive i might fast today um that's why i request especially to start on time so that i can end on time i have a meeting at 11:30 so without further ado uh let's just jump on to the subject um, as uh, anif introduced the importance of uh, uh dental photography uh the main component of today's uh, uh, the introduction probably not so much because we already did that yesterday uh we're going to talk about the relationship between photography and dentistry some common errors is something what i usually like to start the teaching and learning process from so that you can see what we are talking about and then uh we don't go into technicalities before we talk about those common errors first and then we go into technicalities required equipment uh some basic guidelines there's only so much you can do in an hour but usually i conduct full day workshops uh for uh these, these uh, matters and we uh, look at some usage examples as we discussed yesterday um uh, they're not going to go into detail uh, dental background plus media and marketing of over 18 years including Uh, continuing education teaching marketing communication training uh, that's what brings us here um, the overview why why do we need dental photography for documentation for diagnosis for treatment planning for progress monitoring for treatment outcomes um, for education for communication for marketing and sales for creating a portfolio of case reports for yourself and improving case acceptance this last part is very very important it is not talked about a lot in in uh, the third world but increasing case acceptance which means when you show your patients a bit more of what you do and how are the treatments 
uh, how do the treatments uh, help the outcome they tend to accept your treatment more so you see there's a common problem of patients not accepting treatment you offer them a crown they don't take a crown once you show them what it involves and how it helps them they tend to accept it more but what is photography photography is basically writing with light that's what it means and um generally um we say that a picture is worth a thousand words but when it comes to clinical photography a picture really is worth more than a thousand words especially if one have if one has to type them um i took this from a series of articles of irfan ahmed in bdj on digital dental photography if you want to do a read up on dental photography please this is an excellent article series for you to go and refer to uh, it was published in 2009 now uh, the general perception is that uh, taking pictures is easy um thank god for smartphones and people think that you know there's nothing really to learn how to take a picture well nothing could be far from the truth than than this uh, my take is that if you think that taking a picture is easy how about just seeing a picture because for me and this is from experience trust me um, the eye does not see what the mind does not know so it's very important that you develop your knowledge and skill of on this subject so that you you are at least able to see the faults in the picture and you are able to see how uh, an ideal or how a better picture can uh, or should look like so that you can improve make those improvements now here's what the the process is for me you learn to see which is train the brain which is knowledge comes first you use develop you skill after but you gain the knowledge you understand the camera your <clears throat> your tool and then you practice capturing and you move towards developing your skills so knowledge and then skill so starting for the with the most common errors let's take a look at those most around your subject if i am your subject and you can see that this is your frame i am present in a certain proportion of the frame uh, in a certain position i'm not right in the center slightly off center um, now i'm right in the center now i'm in far you see all this dead space around me this is what i mean by space issues and then now i'm too close um, so those are space issues barrel distortion and when something goes very close to the camera it kind of takes the shape of a barrel that's what happens especially when you're using wide angle lenses when you go too close to the camera or you bring the camera too close to the subject barrel distortion happens <clears throat> some images are blurred there are different types of blurs um there is uh, and i will show you all those there's different types of blurs there's a shake blur there is a focus blur there's a motion blur uh, and you need to know and understand how to differentiate between these so that you can fix those problems if you are having them in your photography uh, the the angle of the flash where is it coming from is it coming right from the front is it coming from the sides towards the subject is it coming right from a right angle you got to figure that out exposure uh, which is a com com combined setting which is the total amount of light that is hitting the sensor um, clutter background clutter right now you see a very clean background behind me is just a plain wall um, sometimes they can be things in the background your room your living room your clinic uh, those things should not be present in uh, external photos hues sometimes <clears throat> some photos have a predominant hue right now we are in a very um, what you see of me is very neutral but if i because it's white light if i use a yellow light everything will look yellow if i use a blue light everything will look blue so those are hues they they change the perception the the color rendition in your photograph uh tissue management you know you didn't retract the lip or you didn't pull the flap back or uh, you know other problems uh angles means angle that with from which you were taking the photograph uh the angle from, from which you were um, capturing and aperture settings which relates to kind of exposure as well there are now examples dead space you see there's a lot of space around the subject as opposed to this which is a very fairly balanced 
composition. And when you talk about extra oral photography of patients, this is something you want to change. On the other extreme, this is a bit too tight, too close. Again, we want a balanced composition, balanced framing. This is what that looks like. Barrel distortion. You see how the face and the body, it's kind of looks like a barrel. It's wide at the sides um, and as compared to here. See the difference? Approximately the size of the subject in the frame is approximately the same, but the perspective is very different. So here is the difference. Focus, shake, and motion blur. Um, this, this is a shake blur where the camera has shaken. So, so when shake blur happens, everything in the frame, <clears throat> everything in the frame will shake, will be blurry, which everything means your subject and the background. So the background will also be shaky. This is a different type of blur. This is a focus blur. This is a shake blur. This is a focus blur. So everything is soft as opposed to looking sharp. And only when you know the difference between these two, my dear friends, just look at them again. And when you're taking a photograph, it's a small LCD. You really need to train your eye to see if it is in focus or not. And then uh, if you can detect it, you can take the photograph. The difference in the flash angle, um, this, uh, this photograph has been taken with a DSLR, but in a portrait in a vertical uh, position, which means that the flash was at on one side, and therefore you see a shadow on the other side. This photo was taken with the same DSLR in a horizontal position, and the flash was on top, and it went straight in, and you see that uh, the shadows are reduced. And this has been taken, again, with a vertical orientation, but the flash has been bounced off the ceiling. So you see the light has, come in, has been bounced on the ceiling, and there are no shadows. This is what the impact of the angle of the shadow uh, makes on your resultant photograph. Overexposure. Uh, this is very, very common uh, in dental photography because the subject is white, you are photographing it from very close and you tend to overexpose and then you don't uh, see anything. But with, if you know the manual controls of a camera, you can actually pull down the exposure and see the characteristics of the dental tissue much better. Background clutter is something you want to avoid. See in the background, so much going on. This is not acceptable in, in professional dental photography. You have to have a plain background, either a wall or a, a mobile uh, backdrop that you can just pull behind the dental chair, block the background view, and then take the photo. Hues. If you, maybe if you just see this photograph in isolation, you might not be able to detect that this has a predominant hue of some sort. Uh, but when you compare it with a neutral photo or one that has the, an orange hue, you can see that um, the left one, the one on the left has a blue hue and the one on the right has an orange hue. So these predominant hues need to be corrected. This, these photos need to be corrected for their color recognition. Here is an intro example of how these views impact your image and its colors. For tissue management, you gotta be conscious of, you know, making sure that you are pulling back your cheeks and lips and tongue and whatever uh, that is obstructing the view. In occlusal photography, you gotta be careful of the focus. Sometimes the cameras have difficulty in focusing on a mirror surface. So just make sure that your focus is razor sharp. Um, and even if they are, if they do focus, if you're using the pop-up flash on the camera, you will tend to have shadows, ugly shadows like, like this in your photographs. So that's why a ring light, ring flash is the right uh, equipment for certain types of dental photography and the flash for other types. 
here is the angle the importance of what angle are you photographing from um, this has been photographed from a slightly higher angle uh, which means that you, it is not parallel to the occlusal plane as opposed to this you see the occlusal plane is straight see the difference in angle and the other thing that stands out in this photograph which we will talk about later is the wide aperture you see only the anterior teeth are in focus and everything behind is blurred so this, this has been captured with a wide aperture which is not how you want to take these photos you want a narrow aperture we'll talk about that so uh, just adding to the angle aspect that i just mentioned you see this is roughly how the face is uh, organized and this is the facial plane by nature we tend to photograph things perpendicularly which is perpendicular to the facial plane but please note that the occlusal plane is at an angle so you have to be parallel to the occlusal plane here you have to be parallel you have to be on this green line not on the red line so if you are on the red line you will get the picture on the left and if, if you're on the green line you'll get the picture on the right okay is that clear red line picture on the left green line picture on the right this is what you want here is the example of wide aperture similar to the previous photo you see only the anteriors are in focus and then if you reduce the aperture all the teeth are in focus so generally uh, these photographs are done with a narrow aperture and what a narrow aperture means a lot less light which means you have to compensate for that light with a strong flash so um which would be the rain flash or the rain flash so to summarize it the problems that happen are inadequate understanding of photography of uh, equipment inappropriate equipment insufficient skill and a white subject which is slightly tricky to capture now photography is the art and science of writing with light mind you it is not nikon canon olympus or sony so so just just make sure that that you understand you make sure that you understand photography as a subject, as in the principles of photography, and uh, don't uh, get into the bad trace of brands. Um, once you are there, it makes sense, but early on, there's no point. Here's a good reflection of what light can do to uh, what is the impact of lighting on how your subject looks. Here is one photo which shows a straight on lighting versus this one which shows a three more three-dimensional shape for mm -hmm. your subject so you can see more a lot more detail in this in the right one than you can see in the left one the left one is just straight on lighting with the flash uh, the right one is lit with two two different directions now one camera on four different settings completely auto and i think this was uh, or this was half auto like i think the flash was on auto but the other exposure was manual this was with flash off and uh, everything was on auto and this one was completely manual everything was controlled so therefore obviously you can see the, that the results show so much more detail and the color rendition is also more accurate and here is an interesting thing. I'm sure you guys must have heard while studying hue chroma value. Hue chroma value. Um, if if someone can one sentence, what is hue chroma value? Okay, I want to hear you. Hue chroma value. What is your concept of hue chroma value? Anyone? One person from the 150 people attending.
I want to hear un unmute your mics, please. Uh, Sir, please. actually, the I think the settings will not allow them today oh. because of the disturbance. Yesterday, we okay. uh, disabled it. Why don't you tell me? Sir, um, Chrome, mm. uh, the hue is the shade. like The basic uh, color. The basic color is yes. the hue. And uh, Chroma is uh, basically the saturation, in other words. Right. And uh, what else? Uh, value. Value. So value is lightness and darkness. What is, I guess. Have you been taught what is the most important in these three? Um, no, sir. Value. Re are they not relatively important? No, but, but if, they, if you have to pick one? Value. Value. Okay. Do you know why? No, sir. Okay. Do you see the picture on the slide? Do you see the picture? Yes, sir. Uh, is there any hue in it? No, sir. Is if, if there is no hue, there will be no? Chroma. Color. If there is no hue, there is no? Chroma. Chroma, right? Yes. Because uh, still, saturation or chroma is of color you, Do you still see the photo? Yes. Why? What? What? What is it in the photo that shows you that this thing yeah. exists? Value. Value. Okay. So this is all value. What you're seeing right now is value. That's why it's most important. Because if you take take out value and put uh, hue and chroma, it's useless. Yes, sir. So value is what defines the. the most important determinant. Anyways, let's come back to the equipment. And uh, from the survey, I think about 25 to 30% people in this conversation are uh, owning a DSLR. Um, and the rest can, will be getting in there. So overview of the equipment. We have a body, which is a DSLR. Uh, it can be a crop sensor or a full frame. So whenever, whenever, write this down. Whenever you're buying a DSLR, make sure you know what you are buying. Are you buying a crop, a lens? See here, if you're buying a crop sensor, this is the lens you want to buy, 70 mm. If you're buying a full frame, this is the lens you want to buy for 105. Okay, don't mix, don't buy 105 on or don't buy a 70 mm on a full frame. There are two types of flashes, a twin flash, which is uh, mostly recommended for uh, cosmetic or aesthetic dentistry, and a ring flash for all other general purposes. <clears throat> Generally, these are the basic camera types, a compact camera, a bridge camera, which is a kind of a complicated version of the compact camera. A DSLR, some companies are selling dental cameras with preset modes, they're very expensive. Uh, and obviously, intraoral cameras. Uh, these are very important. The intraoral cameras are very important for the case acceptance mm -hmm. that I mentioned. But our focus of discussion is the DSLR. So here's an example of how a bridge camera, now you might you might say, okay, what is the difference between a bridge camera and DSLR? It's just the quality of optics. This is, you see, this is, uh, this is a bridge camera result versus a DSLR result. You see the difference? And this is a very, very old photo. This is a photo back from the time when they used to be um, six megapixel cameras. This is a six megapixel camera. Um, newer cameras, even more amazing and detailed. Camera controls are basically divided into two types. You have buttons and dials and menus. Uh, there are cameras that have lots of buttons on them, uh, which is which includes the DSLR and then there's 
cameras that look very simple because they don't have buttons, they have menus. But these cameras that look simple are actually more complicated to use because every time you need to make a change, you need to go into the menu and change that setting. That's not at all convenient. So if a camera looks very simple and easy, it does not mean that it is actually simple and easy to use because the more settings that you have accessible on your button, they are the easier the camera it is to handle, the faster it is to operate. <coughs> as opposed to having to go into the menus all the time. Now, with the DSLR, what you can also do is progressive incorporation in your practice. You can just buy a basic DSLR with a kit lens, 18 to 55. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg for it. When you have more money, you can upgrade yourself to a macro lens. And when you are able to buy later on, you can buy a ring or twin flash, right? So you don't have to buy all this together. So if, if price or cost is a factor, is a deterrent, then, then just go gradually. Okay, go up gradually. Don't jump onto the whole set together. That's the beauty of DSLR. It's forever. It's like you don't have to dispose of it. But if you buy a cheaper camera, the next time you want a better camera, you'll have to throw away this camera. With the DSLR, you can just keep adding upgrades. Here are the two basic types of flashes, rather three. Um, as I said earlier, the twin flash is more for aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry, ring flash for everything else. And um, again, if cost is a deterrent, you get these hot shoe flash converters. It's not the hot shoe because you'll end up buying this hot shoe flash also. It's actually, um, what you're doing is you're increasing the utility of this flash. This is a hot shoe flash that, that, that So if you want to use one flash for two purposes, you have, and what's the difference in the clinical result? This is the difference. Um, with the ring flash, you get full illumination, but it's not the best angle. You see the uh, twin flash. The twin flash really gives a very three-dimensional look. Just the way I showed you the photo of the, of the cast, the model, uh, while a two-dimensional uh, two -dimensional lighting. This is two-dimensional lighting. So this looks so much more beautiful, but the buccal corridors are dark. The inside of the mouth will be dark because the Cheeks obstruct the light coming from the two angles. Um, miscellaneous uh, paraphernalia includes retractors, infrared mirrors, contrastors. Uh, these are things that will help you take better photographs. Uh, in the there are different designs, and you see, photography is like a like a bottomless pit. Once you get into this, you just keep. Putting uh, different amounts of money into it. This is what a contrastor does. You can do this in software also, but it's more complicated and difficult. So it's just get done with the on spot. So, what are the components of an image? Um, composition, you need to make sure it's, it has the right focus, the right exposure. The condition is accurate. This is what the pathway of light is from left to right. The flash, uh, the pathway, and the characteristics. The flash could be fully powered or adjusted. The lens comes next, and the light is passing through the lens. Uh, the lens is characterized by its focal length. Could be a wide angle lens. Could be standard. Could be normal. Could be telephoto. Uh, a wide angle usually less than 35 mm. Lenses. 35 mm is a standard lens. 50 mm is a normal lens, which means the why why is it called normal? Because the angle of view of a 50 mm lens is the same as the normal human uh, eye. Uh, the angle of view of a of a human eye. And then above 50, a, you start venturing into the telephoto range. Um, 100 to 105 is is what you're looking for for clinical photography, both intraoral and extraoral. 
And as you keep on increasing the focal length, uh, which means you are increasing the zoom. What, what, when you're zooming into something, you're increasing the focal length. And what you're doing when you're zooming in, you're essentially narrowing the field of view. As you keep uh, zooming in, you keep decreasing the angle of view. Aperture is an opening in the lens that allows a certain amount of light pass through. Um, it's widest in the lowest numbers, which, one, which means f1.1, 1.8, or f2 is a wide aperture. F22, f32 are very narrow apertures. And obviously, you can understand that the wider the aperture, the more light enters the camera, the narrower the aperture, the less light enters the camera. So they are uh, inversely proportional, the number. The higher the number, the lower is the amount of light. Shutter speed is a shutter is a curtain. It opens and closes at a certain speed. Uh, usually in the clinic, you're using about shutter speed of 125 to 250. While we talk about this shutter speed in a whole number, it is actually a fraction of a second. So when we say 125, it's 125th of a second. When we say 250, it's 250th of a second. So which one is shorter or which one is faster? 250. It's faster than 125. Which one lets more light? 125 lets in more light than 250 because it's slower. Increased means fast, which means decreased light. And then at the end, you have the sensor um, with who, whose sensitivity you can adjust. It, and it is expressed in ISO numbers, the lowest being um, the standard being 100, and then you can go 200, 400, 800, 1600, and so on and so forth. The higher you go, the more sensitive the sensor is to light. It's the same amount of light. light. Amount of light is not changing. The response of the sensor is changing. Um, and the higher you go the more sensitive the sensor becomes like more degradation of the image starts to happen in terms of um, it's called noise and it shows up as red green blue dots in your image if you look very closely and this is a diagrammatic representation of what I was showing you light is entering here the lens uh, goes through the uh, aperture and then uh, hits the mirror. You see it from here, but when you take the photo, this mirror gets lifted and this light hits the sensor, okay? So exposure basically comprises of the lens aperture, the shutter, which is in the body, the sensor, and the amount of light. So these elements give you the net exposure. Uh, you can have different combinations that can give you the same exposure. You can have a very wide aperture and a very fast shutter speed and the opposite, a very narrow aperture and a slow shutter speed that will give you the same exposure. But it, the, both photos will look very different because of the individual influence of these components on uh, the image. So here is a summary of what are the factors that increase light or make the image brighter and what are the factors that decrease light, right? Wider aperture will make a brighter picture. Slower shutter will make a brighter picture. Higher ISO will make a brighter picture. And less light, arrow aperture, faster shutter, and low ISO will give you a darker. So balanced exposure at the end of the day is a balance of these components. Finely tuned balance. This is what I mean uh, by the aperture diameter. This would be F2, this would be F32, and everything in between. Shutter speed, this is how shutter speed works. As I said, I told you 125 means 125th of a second. 250 means 250th. The faster you go, the more you are able to freeze motion. And the slower you go, the more motion blur. This is the third type of blur. Remember the shake blur? 
Shake blur is also a type of motion blur, but it's it's the motion of the camera. Here we're talking about the motion of the subject. So the slower you go, the more motion blur you will capture. This is the difference between the crop sensor and the full frame sensor. Remember, I was mentioning you that there are two types of camera bodies, crop sensor. So, so if you take a full frame camera, this is what your image looks like. For example, if you're using a 100 mm lens, this is what the image looks like on a full frame. But if you put the same 100 mm lens on a crop sensor, this is what your image will look like. Your 100 mm lens will act like a 150 mm lens. So please be very careful. These are the two different sizes. The blue is the full frame, the yellow is the crop sensor. So make sure you know what you're buying. 25 minutes to go. Taking pictures is where the fun begins. Um, basic views, extra oral and intra oral. You need uh, um, for portraits, is one category of extra oral photos. You need one facial, two oblique, and two lateral views. And then there are obviously casts, appliances, other things. Things that you capture extraordinarily, there are different photographic techniques. And there are some things like a smile or a disappointed or disappointed. So here are examples: uh, extraordinary facial, oblique, lateral, intraoral frontal look, wounded. To a close them and you can even have close ups. These are tests done either with an drawer camera or you can, if you have a higher resolution uh, uh, DSLR, you can take an occlusal photo with a uh, facial and oblique views. <coughs> Something to keep in mind for facial view is, is that the face should be straight in all things as much as possible. Um, on the frontal for the oblique, just make sure that the nose does not cross the cheek line. Okay, be sure that the nose does not cross the cheek line and that the neck is in the correct posture. What does this mean? I'll just show you here. You see, uh, with age, with the uh, habits, our postures are spoiled. Sometimes, if you just ask someone to sit, they will sit with their neck um, forward. So you actually have to ask them to sit straight. And fix their neck position. So you have to observe your subjects very carefully. Same goes for the lateral view. The neck and the posture is very important. She's fine. So uh, not one of the most straightforward images just take, but just make sure you have to pull out the retractors out of the view. The retractors should ideally not come in the view. Or if they're coming, um, you can crop that once you But ideally, you should not have them. Keep your angle of views as consistent as possible. As you can start, but they reflect the progress of this patient throughout these months. Now, how does marketing relate to photography? As I mentioned, one thing already is your case acceptance. Uh, you can use photography. Case presentation, before after photos, similar to smile designs, you can take social media photographs, you can have uh, specialty headshots and group shots on your website and on and marketing, virtual tours, funny photos, lots of photos. So communication is becoming more and more visual. So the more photographs you use, make sure that they are used in a very meaningful and rational way.
presenting a clinical scenario, what is more likely to gain acceptance? Mrs. Jones, your front teeth are rotated and may need to be aligned. You just say this and stop here, as opposed to you complement your statement with the following. Mr. Smith, the inner and chewing surfaces of your teeth are severely damaged by acid. Say that, stop there, or add a photo. Right? Obviously, when you show the image to the uh, uh, patient, they're more likely to accept your treatment. And you can always show your patients the before and after when you have completed their obviously they will appreciate what is it? 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 Professional team headshots? Yes, see, well, it's a very, very um, good way of showcasing your uh, team. And it makes it look very professional. Team shots? Always in, in marketing, I, I, I see people using a lot of, uh, what do they say, stock images, stock images. Um, I don't really like that idea. So it's, it's, it's better if you guys use uh, original uh, images so that uh, you can showcase yourself better and your team. Um, another extremely uh, useful utilization of photography is virtual tours. In personal marketing, the headshot is your brand statement for yourself. You see, you may have a photo that looks like this, but then if you replace it with something like this, it makes a hell of a difference. You may have a photo like this, but if you replace it with this, or something like this that is replaced by this, Imagine the difference in impact that this photo will create. Alternately, you can go for corporate style photography, which also uh, is, is an excellent way to create your brand image. So to recap, we talked about photography and dentistry. We, we went through some common errors. And I, I think that this, yes, I'm, uh, this webinar is being recorded. So if you felt that I was, I went through a few things uh, a bit quickly, um, uh, my apologies, I am on the timeline and I had to finish, but you can always go back to this and watch it again and again. And if you don't understand something, you can always shoot me a message. We talked about required equipment, some usage examples. And uh, I think the good, the best part of this is that we have time for Q and A. Um, the quiz must have probably already reached you. Um, this is this yes, is sir. A, this is a, a photo of um, a bus in a in, in rainfall when I was in Lahore. Um, captured this photo several years ago. This was before 2012, and I still use them in my presentation. Wonderful memory. It looked. Um, very interesting those colors and uh, and the water flowing on the window thank you for your attention and if you have any questions i will be happy to answer yes sir Our students are asking in the chat okay would you like me to read or <laughs> So how do you adjust your setting in the white background and black background? What is what ISO aperture? You see, you have to. Uh, there is no. There is no um, silver bullet formula. You have to look in the frame. You have to look in the frame, you have to see the exposure, the meter reading, the in a DSLR, the DSLR will give you a meter reading of whatever is in your frame, is it overexposed or underexposed? You change your settings accordingly because it depends on your subject. What subject are you photographing in front of that white or dark background? Because then you have to see, 
uh, obviously when you are photographing the same subject in front of a white background, the camera will show it as overexposed. If you're photographing the same subject against a black background, the camera will show it as underexposed. So you have to take the actual photo yourself and then adjust those settings. There is no one setting. There cannot be one setting, okay? Um, uh, does the rubber dam affect uh, not as much not as much um, but uh, but if you want to minimize the impact of a rubber dam see if you can get uh, gray scale like a gray shaded rubber dam that will minimize any impact of the rubber dam on the respiration or black rather. Can we use diffusers for flash lights, especially well, no, ring lights? No, good question. Ring lights are pretty much useless. Ring lights are very different from ring flashes. Ring lights are very weak. So they are, they are really not good. They are weak, plus they have a very heavy blue uh, hue sometimes. So, so ring lights are not that good. Flashes are better. Um, crop sensor and full frame difference. Crop sensor is, is a, I'm asking for these again too. Crop sensor is a smaller sensor. Full frame is a bigger sensor. Full frame is the, the standard size of a sensor. The standard size, the standard professional size is the full frame. The crop sensor is a junior version. Okay. Ring lights, I already answered. Diffusers, yes, you can use diffusers for sure. Rubber dams affect hue. Yes, might be slightly. If you wanna uh, as I said, use a black one or a gray one. Best aperture for intraoral photography. Usually narrow apertures. Um, beginning from 16 onwards. 22, 32, anything. Uh, narrower aperture. Okay. Uh, white and black background, I mentioned that uh, it really depends on the subject and you have to do the media reading. So you have many people using mobile photography, what does this look from how interesting they are. Uh, not, for, um, not good for publication or professional uh, work. Yes, a lot of people using doesn't make right doesn't make it the best choice okay uh, but yeah so um, there are several uh, adjustments converters available um, I think that's beyond the scope of this conversation it's more of a trial and error because of, there's no standards in that in that front so you have to see what works best Sensor full frame. I told you, crop is a small sensor full frame. The larger professional sensor. Okay. What else? Let's go back. Check. What is the use of black contrasters? Uh, black contrasters are used to block the background view just to focus on the thing and it uh, so that you can uh, see it more clearly and you don't get distracted by the background uh Tosif is asking today's mobile lenses are having more megapixel even than dslr but dslr is are clear why this happens a uh, lenses don't have megapixels Tosif. sensors have megapixel. not the lens sensor okay first thing b 
DSLR has very, very superior optics. Okay, so um, try to understand that the more, as much as megapixels are good and important, it's the quality of the optics that wins. So you can have two sensors or and the size of the sensor. A cell phone, okay, um, there are a couple of questions about cell phones. So let me tell you why cell phone is not the best. Because A, cell phone has a tiny lens, DSLR has a big lens. No comparison, but cell phone has a tiny sensor. Um, DSLRs have a large sensor. Whether it's a crop or a full frame, it's a large sensor. No comparison between those. Uh, a cell phone is only the thing about a cell phone is it's a bit more convenient. Otherwise, it's a bit more easy. Otherwise, the result um, have they're not even close. Um, the cell phones make that photo look very pretty on this display. It looks very pretty, uh, but if you really put it to a larger size or you look closely, they're not. There are different things these other companies to some people like Nikon, some Sony. What's the best for dental photography as a Nikon is? No, uh, any camera that have control over and that you know how to get the result out of and works in your head is the one you should use. Is there any advanced dental photography course? Yes, the uh, We do give detailed courses as well. Um, and uh, we can send you more details of those courses um, through PADS and it will have a PADS discount on it as well. Okay. Um, says, oh, so I've seen my college teachers use a mirror to record reflections of good services. No, they don't use mirrors to record reflections. I mean, they, they use the mirror to the actual image. Uh, because it gives a better angle. Yes, so it is a proper technique. Tayyab, um, please email your queries to let me put down my email address. There you go. Um, in fact, I'll put it to everyone, right? Everyone. If you want to inquire about courses, everyone, please use this email address for detailed courses okay when we remove lens from the SRR then it should behave like the camera like also mobile camera I'm not sure what that means I have no idea um if you can please unmute and you ask that uh, question on your uh, uh, mic I still have nine minutes so I can hear your question directly because I don't know what it, what it means. Please unmute your mic. Muhammad Ibrahim Khan, or anyone else, if you have any questions, you can please unmute and ask. Sometimes it's you're not able to articulate the question properly. Uh, uh, Khadija, send me that photo and I'll tell you what the problem is. Okay. It wasn't visible in the picture. Maybe the first thing is you weren't shooting at the right angle, the correct angle. Uh, the other could be that uh, it was blurred. So I don't know what you mean by it wasn't visible. Was it blurred? Was it? You can unmute and ask. Uh, we have enabled it now. It was enabled. It wasn't. Just share the photo. Simple. Share the photo, and I I can only tell you when. She to share the photo. 
the shutter speed important for a clear pick off if, if it's too low then the photo will be blurry will have shake blur in it I think you have raised hand. Uh, do you have a question? It was seen like the other shade was in differentiating the tooth and cat. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so the detail was missing. Uh, the detail was was missing and probably it was over lit. Light, light was too much. Um, the lens wasn't sharp. The focus wasn't um, sharp enough. The quality of the optics was not good. So, so the sharpness is what differentiates. So I think it's more about lighting and focus. I'm assuming it's a guessing game. I haven't seen the photo. <clears throat> it's not a problem of the dental light, uh, uh, my friends. It's a problem of controlling the exposure. Light is necessary. Light is good. You need light. Photography can't be done without any light. So the light is not the problem. The problem is controlling the light. Harnessing the light. Optimizing the light. When you shine light on something, your camera or whatever instrument you're using to photograph that image should have the ability to reduce that light and optimize that exposure manually. Usually, people do it themselves. They learn it and they, they, they conduct they troubleshoot. They, there's no point in hiring a professional. You, you train yourself or one of your team members to do it. Exposure and uh, ISO contributes towards exposure. Exposure, or in, if you want, in very strict academic terms, exposure relates to the actual amount of light that is coming into the camera, which is controlled by the aperture and shutter. Okay, and ISO is the response of the sensor to that light. But in loose terms, the combination of uh, lens, of uh, shutter, aperture, and ISO is called exposure. The combination, the resultant image through the combination, combined setting of aperture, shutter, and ISO is called exposure. But in strict, truest academic sense, exposure is controlled only by aperture and shutter. And ISO is the response of the sensor to that uh, light. Our patients see the convinced to have their teeth photographed for the world to see. Um, they are easily convinced, but it is not for the world to see. It is for record, for their medical dental records. It is not for the world to see. You have to get consent. Um, and you have to show their teeth without identifying them. They should not be identified in those images. So no one would know whose teeth they are. Uh, usually they don't have a problem. If you tell them that this is for record purposes, for treatment uh, management and monitoring, uh, they don't have a problem. So Maya, okay. Kausif, your question answered. Laiba, Khadija, you guys good? So let's 
Mr. Claude, shall we? If you have any questions, I, I think I posted my email address. Feel free to ask. You can find me on uh, Facebook also. Um, uh, you can follow me. I think I have a page that I just recently created because I cannot add uh, any more friends. So you can follow the page and uh, reach out to me for anything that you may need. Anika, are we good? Yes, sir. Uh, have yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much for today. And we will have the quiz now uh, um, after a quick picture. Uh, and if you have time, things, all the things were answered in the all the things in the quiz were discussed. Nearly all were discussed in the lecture. So I hope you guys listen carefully. Yes, sir. and those who want to open their videos, they can. And Anik, you can uh, take the screenshots. And then those asking about the quiz, uh, we will display the timer as well as you've been mailed the links. If there is a problem, we'll share the link here in chat as well. All those present, don't worry, we'll give you time. Uh, Anika, are you ready? You'll be taking the screenshots, right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. There are six screens today, so we'll have to take. <clears throat> Count to five and you can take one two three four five say cheese thank you so much everyone All right, guys, take care. Bye bye. Thank you so much, sir. It was such an informative session, and I'm uh -huh. sure I'm a lot for of having more to go to too fast. Apologies. Uh, no, sir. And there were so many new concepts. And I think um, even if it wasn't understandable for some, some found it that it was uh, a bit fast. I think still there was a lot to learn to at least know what to learn about dental photography. Perfect. So that part was very Perfect. Much covered. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Allah. Um, okay, so for everyone, please uh, open the quiz links. We are not starting the link right now. Even if you open the link, it will say that uh, the quiz is not available. So we will wait for like, uh, it, it is 8.32 right now. And until 8.35, if there is anyone who wants to say that maybe their quiz is not running or they don't have the link in the email, basically. Because or they, they don't, if only in form, don't have. You have, to go, you have to go and, and check, check the previous name. Yes, yes. I will share a screenshot of the mail as well for those still who still can't find.
Open the uh, uh, quiz link. It's saying it has been removed. Okay. Um. I uh, actually the quiz has not started yet. Uh, you uh, you cannot fill it uh, until everyone says that they have the link. Okay. Uh, I have sent the quiz link in this chat as well here in the webinar chat. You can access from there as well. And uh, if no one t says now in the next one or two minutes that they don't have the link now, then we will uh, start it and the timer will start as well. Yes, you cannot fill it. Uh, it is not accepting responses right now. So two minutes if one says that they do not have the link. Arabia Take your no link. I just sent in the same chat. I'll send it again. If you scroll up, you will find it. I just sent it again. So hopefully uh, you've opened it and you don't have any problem with it. Okay. okay. Uh, you can all refresh now. It is accepting responses. Please refresh and check. And the time starts now. You have 25 minutes. Hopefully you're all solving and there's no problem.